Hello and welcome to the 6780 Evac and Fill Dispensing Units demonstration. Now, Fluidine Control Systems has a range of different products and services for the automotive industry assembly line filling applications. Now, just think about it for a minute. When you drive your vehicle every day, apart from the standard petrol and diesel that you use to run the vehicle, you don't really think about the different other liquids that are continuously in action to make driving a seamless experience. For example, you have brake oil in the brake assembly that makes braking from 100 miles per hour to 0 miles per hour possible within a couple of seconds and saves your life in the process. There is coolant in the coolant engine which essentially cools the radiator and stops the engine from heating up. There is also power steering oil in the power steering assembly which enables smooth operation of the steering wheel. And lastly, there is also clutch oil that enables power transmission from the clutch subsystem. With all these aspects in mind, Fluidine Control Systems has pioneered the design and development of the 6780 Evac and Fill dispensing units for all liquids requiring evacuation-based filling. The products now come enabled with different solutions around Internet of Things and enable the machines to interact intelligently with their operators and decision makers. Now we will take a look at the coolant mix filling system, which is the first part of our 6780 filling machines. The coolant filling machine is a combination of mechatronic devices that form different sub-assemblies and finally enable uh, the filling of coolant in requisite amounts into the coolant reservoir. This machine over here has nearly five different sub-assemblies and we'll go over them one by one. The first sub-assembly is the storage and transfer sub-assembly. What this does is that it accurately transfers the coolant and the water mixture from their reservoirs or from their storage tanks into the machine storage tank. Many a time we have coolant stored in barrels in a form of pre-mixed coolant which is already mixed with water while many a time we also have standard coolant barrels and the water coming in from distribution pipelines. This is an example of a machine where the water has come in from a pipeline and it has a water flow meter installed over here to accurately measure the amount of water coming in from the pipeline and to stop the dispensing or the transfer pump from transferring requisite amount of water into the tank since we have to fill the coolant in a certain ratio of coolant is to water. The second flow meter over here is our coolant flow meter, which essentially is meant for measurement of accurate transfer of coolant from barrels or from overhead storage tanks or underground storage tanks into the reservoir over here, the storage tank that we have over here. In order to transfer the, these liquids, we have a combination of different pumps, such as diaphragm pumps or even centrifugal pumps at times. And this storage tank can essentially house about 200 to 250 liters of liquid stored in a certain ratio. The ratio is programmed by the operator on the HMI that we will show in the next sub-assembly video. And uh, the, 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 the coolant and the water is mixed exactly in that ratio and stored in this tank. The third important part of the storage and transfer assembly is the agitator. The agitator makes sure that this mixture is continuously mixed. It is not kept still because the coolant would then settle at the bottom and water would rise to the top. Right, so this is very, very important. And we also have the standard gauges over here, the level gauge, the fill level gauge, the high level point. And we also have a four point level transmitter that is coupled to the PLC that provides an input of low level or high level or even a dangerously high, high level is, is programmed over here. So that the machine, if at all any parts of the machine are uh, in an error condition, the operator can take the correct actions. The second sub-assembly is the evacuation sub-assembly or the most important sub-assembly as it is called. The evacuation is what allows the reservoir to be completely evacuated of air and air bubbles and that's what enables the liquid to be filled seamlessly. Over here we essentially have the main component of the evacuation assembly, the vacuum pump. That is a rotary vane kind of design vacuum pump. What the vacuum pump does is that it basically evacuates the liquid from the, from the port where the nozzle connects to the port and the air all gets sucked away from the reservoir and out into this trap right over here. The air is continuously being discharged from the trap and it is being released to the atmosphere. In order to achieve this evacuation, along with the pump, we also have vacuum-specific pneumatic valves, which essentially form 
uh, which are essentially put at different parts of the line. You will see a, uh, the presence of a vacuum uh, specific pneumatic valve at every point in the line. And in order to isolate the line, you have certain fittings known as triclovers, which can easily be removed by loosening them and by isolating any part of the line for service. The third sub-assembly is the dispensing uh, assembly, which comprises of a dispensing pump, a positive displace displacement flow meter, a dual stage vending valve, a hose, and a drip tight nozzle for seamless, accurate, and drip free operation. The pump pumps the liquid, the coolant, and water mixture at a certain flow rate. And the positive displacement flow meter continuously counts the packets or the pulses of liquid that are passed from inlet to outlet. The vending valve is used to shut off the flow once the requisite amount of coolant has been dispensed. And the dripless nozzle, of course, ensures zero drip operation after filling is complete. After the dispensing cycle comes the suck back cycle. In most vehicles, there are two options of filling. One is a radiator with an expansion tank and the other is a degassing tank. When we have degassing tanks, a little bit of the liquid that has been filled right up to the brim has to now be sucked back or removed from the machine in order to maintain the levels between min and max indicators. In order to do this, we have a suck back cycle which reutilizes the same vacuum pump in, in order to remove the excess liquid and to return it back into the storage tank. The fifth and final sub-assembly is of the electronics and the electronic control, which essentially forms the brain of the entire system that we've built over here. So um, right at the outside, we have a couple of useful buttons for the operators, such as the switch between auto and manual modes, uh, the acknowledgement of an alarm, or even for, uh, for that matter, an emergency stop button, which is required to stop the machine in case of an emergency condition. We also have our basic HMI, which is the human machine interface. And this is completely touchscreen, by the way. Uh, an operator can navigate between the different menus. He can make his settings over here. He can set the coolant and water ratios. He can set uh, the different barcodes that he wants to scan and fill the machine, uh, uh, fill the vehicles beforehand. And he can also take a look at the air leak, air leak tests and also the list of alarms that have come through. So this is a very interactive display which essentially forms the basis of uh, the machine interacting with the operator that goes on to fill uh, the vehicles. Taking a look at this uh, panel inside and what we've done to ensure maximum safety is the importance of the power supply. Right Now the incoming three-phase power supply from a customer site is basically isolated over here by the means of an isolation transformer. Through the isolation transformer, we form our own neutral line, and that's what basically powers up the machine and enables it to be stable during operation. And this is very important since our, our power lines are always prone to surges, and that could result in a, in, a, in a problematic condition for the machine. Along with the transformer, we have our standard switch gear, which is our MCBs, our MPCBs, our contactors, and so on and so forth. And also the uh, SMPS, which basically powers the PLC, that is the brain of the system. So all the switch gear is usually taken in Siemens or other brands that uh, a customer might specify. Uh, going forward to the main controller, which is the PLC or the programming logic controller. We, for this machine, for this particular machine, we have selected Mitsubishi uh, FX series, but we also have a choice between Allen Bradley and Siemens on the other side. Right, so the PLCs come with their own standard cards such as Modbus cards or CC Link cards or Profibus cards depending on what you need to communicate uh, this system with. For example, if you have a server that communicates on Profibus or a larger DCS that is speaking to the PLC, then we can have uh, bespoke uh, connections and bespoke protocols built into the PLC for the same. Fourthly. Uh, the most important invention that I was speaking about regarding industrial IoT 4.0 protocols is the development of the flow link, which is a small device that sits inside the PLC panel discreetly. What this flow link does is that it enables the machine to interact intelligently with the operator as well as decision makers or auditors in your plant. How this does it is very simple. It collects the data from the machine over an RS-485 Modbus link. And through this, it will transmit the same to the Flowlog mailbox service or the Flowlog cloud service on which a customer can view his reports. He can view emails which contain report uh, attachments and also 
uh, have a clear understanding of the machine filling data as well as the machine diagnostics, something that every uh, service person would be interested in. After powering on the machine, the machine automatically checks the pump vacuum and the line vacuum levels with a 10 second timer. In case of failure to reach set point, alarms are provided. The machine also has an air leak test to determine leaks in the system due to decrease in air pressure with respect to time. After the diagnostic conditions are run, the machine begins the evac cycle upon pressing the start button. After the 30 millibar set point is reached, the machine also holds and checks the vacuum for any leaks. We then begin the filling cycle in which the radiator is completely filled up to the set point defined by the recipes or barcode scans. In case of expansion bottles, we have a preset based quantity addition of coolant. After the expansion bottle completes filling, the cycle is completed and a printed transaction can be obtained from the machine. With a simple quarter turn, the nozzle is removed and parked in home position. There you have it, the 6780 coolant machine, which can be used with radiators and expansion bottles or degassing tanks. Check the link in the description box for connecting with sales to discuss your requirement.